this is a good one for if you sit on the couch and watch TV at night. Clean up the intercooler really good and take it inside and set it on your lap and just pick away at it as you're watching YouTube. Okay, shut down, copyright stuff. We got parts. Welcome back, guys. Uh, continuing on with the Subaru motor STI assembly here. This video should be shorter because, well, we ain't got much to do. Just a little bit on the motor, get it together here and throw it in the car. Oh, I think I deleted a whole bunch of content or a whole bunch of footage of assembling, well, Part of the motor the other head is on the block already the other head was fine uh, it was flat and clean and that one just got checked over and then bolted up this one however um it, i mean you you call it, it's pitting i don't know how well the camera's picking it up that's like corrosion of the aluminum and it's on the ceiling surface. It actually crosses, yeah, right through here. It's in the compression ring, the, the, the cylinder ring of the gasket. Right there's that line all the way around the cylinder. That's the, the main ceiling contact area of that gasket for the cylinder. And that pitting passes right through it. Now, uh, you can't catch a finger on it anywhere. And you can't even, like, it's almost like it's not there but if you look super super close at it which this camera is not going to do it's well i mean it's not a nice clean surface so i threw it in the mill uh, we're back here on the lagoon and i just bumped the, the knee up so now my thing is wrong but i'll reset that uh i got it all bolted down and set up and ready to go i think i'm just gonna dial up uh, i think three thousands maybe just two we want to take the least amount of material possible so uh yeah we're gonna take hopefully i don't know if you can see those lines that was from me dialing stuff in and checking spots um instead of doing a dial indicator i just brought up the tool till it was touching and just swung it around by hand checking for low spots and checking that it's flat and stuff and whatnot so yeah i'm gonna dial this in we're gonna take off i don't know maybe i'll go two maybe we'll just try two thousands i got a nice honed bit on here this is more uh yeah this is a boring head for you guys i'm sure some of you lots of you all of you noticed uh i don't have a nice big diameter fly cutter yet i gotta build one of those someday maybe maybe a video coming up run it's going the right way and I, I think that'll do. Yep. Feels like a head. All right, finally, we can get this head put on. Ugh. 
Three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? Thirty foot pounds. Seventy footy pounds. Now we loosen them all. Loosen all the bolts. It says 180 degrees, but basically it's till they're loose. And I tighten all bolts in alphabetical order to seven foot pounds. I don't think this doesn't even go down to seven foot pounds. So we'll just imagine that's about seven. Point one. We're at 22 and a half uh, foot pounds. All right, further tighten to 51. All right, there's, uh, there's that. Now you do the degrees. 90 degrees. 90. All right, further tighten all bolts in alphabetical order by 45 degrees. 45 degrees. 45 degrees. 45 degrees. That's a squeaky one. 45. 25. 25. Then the middle two by another 45. Because they take the most pressure because they're between both cylinders. 45. And 45. So now that head is, that's, there, there it is. That, if you guys want to zoom in and see. All right, now out of all the cups I had, I was able to make up a complete set for this whole head. Intake was seven thousandths clearance I got on every single one of them, except one was seven and a half, I believe. Intake, yeah, seven and a half I got out of number two. Oh, intake side, number two from the pulley side. I got seven and a half thousandths on that one, which is well within spec. I think spec is like nine thousandths on intake six to nine something like that exhaust um it started out with nine eight 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 thousands but it's supposed to be around what is it 10 to 15 so i was trying to shoot for 13 um i got 13 out of these two and then 14 and a half and 15 15 is at the upper end the tolerance limit but it only tightens up as it as it wears over time so that'll be that'll be okay okay so these buckets these go on top of the uh, valves on the stem and these buckets are different thickness this is how you adjust a valve lash on this motor similar to the jaguar xk no uh jaguar e-type on the other head the exhaust cam every single lash on that exhaust side was way under by like seven thousandths or more so at that point instead of me just being able to like put all the buckets back in their same spot they came from putting everything back together i was like well now we're going to have to go and check everyone. So I put all the buckets in a pile and I started going through and measuring each one, taking measurements of the buckets and finding their homes. And this side we can completely assemble. I've got the perfect buckets for all of these. 
This is the exhaust side. We'll start back here. The other side, the other head, I have the right buckets to do the intake cam, but the exhaust cam on the other side, I had to order all four new buckets. For some reason, that other head, the exhaust valves are, they must be well seated in their seats. Good we caught that now. And then inside every cat, there's a measurement. This one says four. 95 and I actually found out that means 4.95 millimeter thickness is what this bucket is and um, measuring it I use a micrometer to measure it and yeah it's that's that's what it is I like to go over all my parts with my hand get any little fuzzies or any little lint or anything off of them uh, tack cloth works well as well but that's this is what I got here now this is intake cam we're gonna put some lube on all the journals and every bucket. And I drop in the cam with the lobes facing up just to make sure none of these buckets got messed up. Here we got a 7,000 shim. And well, you're supposed to bolt it all down to do these measurements, but I am just pushing down on a cam. I trying to figure out what was going wrong with that exhaust cam on the other side. I tried everything. I tried just doing it pushing down i tried bolting it down i tried everything to figure out what was going on why the tolerance tightened up and well i found that just pushing down on a cam like this with well-oiled journals and taking the measurement was exactly the same as having all the cam caps and everything all bolted on it, i couldn't see a measurable difference whatsoever doing it either way so this is what i've been doing because it's been easy um Get this cam in here, push down on it, make sure it's in between the lobes, so no lobes, no part of this whole duration of this lobe from here to here is facing down and pushing on any of these buckets. You can feel when they start to make contact. So this should be, yeah, seven, 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 and seven. That fits in there just where i don't know how to explain like it's in there snuggish like see it takes like a little roll of the can to get it to go start going underneath there and there's a slight drag to it you see it doesn't just slip out but it just slightly drags uh hopefully you guys can see that's seven thousandths that's pretty much right what i was shooting for so if you try to do an eight that's a little, little harder to get in there that, that's it's not quite an eight they're spot on some of you guys are probably wondering too like why not why well, where's the why not assembly lube we'll get to that later if your buckets are wrong how to find out what you need um the shop manual tells you to find the smallest bucket or the thinnest bucket and use that same bucket and go from each one to each one measuring it. Measuring for these buckets, say you would have a bucket that's way undersized, you would go underneath with this feeler until you get to the point you get that resistance. You say, oh, say this 24,000 fit underneath there. Well, then you know, you write this down, that you're, you would be 10,000 over what you need to be. This is 24,000 set theoretically would fit in there but we want to be at say 14 thousandths to make it easy make up 10 thousandths so you take what size your bucket is that you're using for testing each one of these lobes and you add what you need to the size of that bucket and that'll tell you what size bucket you should order for that cam lobe that valve that that there deal then yeah do that for everyone you make up a sheet i was doing intake cam uh what the measurements were what the bucket size was uh exhaust cam and you can see this is where that was eight thousandths nine thousandths what the bucket was what my corrected bucket size was and what my final measurement was then so i was able to take what it was nine thousandths clearance and i had a 503 bucket in there i figured out that a 495 bucket gave me 13 thousandths and it it worked out you map it out take your time with it because those buckets are 20 bucks a pop i just forget you see this it is now day like 700 of 
getting Subaru back on uh, together and stuff. So let's just continue on in here. I worry about pickup tubes and getting leaks and get little tiny little bu air bubbles in them in the oil. And it can cavitate and cause issues. So we're just gonna smear on a light coat of this gray RVT, RTV. Smear off the excess off the outside edge here. And definitely do not want any going down the pickup tube. And I believe these are around click 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 all right oil pan while this oil pan does not have a very clean appearance i know what it looks like uh, yep that is i don't know i that's just it's staining or something but however while we're here uh the importance of cleaning parts in a motor that ate up a rod bearing. That metal from that rod bearing was everywhere in these motors. Especially oil pans when you get these baffles in. When this tray's in here, uh, the metal can get stuck in these little corners and crevices and everything very easily. And cleaning this, uh, most people recommend replacing these and I probably would too. I take a stupid amount of time making sure I'm like actually like forcing and moving stuff around as I'm like scrubbing and getting underneath here with super good brushes and everything and over and over again blow it all out clean it again blow it all out over and over and over and over again to make sure that all of that metal is taken up out of all these little nooks and crannies and crevices and pockets and hidden places uh, it's not to say that's not guaranteed that there's maybe a few little chunks in there yet i'm just hoping that they're stuck wherever they're stuck and they are not going to present any problems for us on the Subaru pan do not forget this o-ring and again this is the one place basically that I don't wipe the RTV on I actually like apply it because it has these pockets all the way around to hold glue I guess so this is like the one place I actually squeeze on RTV I don't think any of these holes in here pass through into oil so I don't think you have to worry so much about getting sealant all the way around these holes on this pan but we we do anyhow because we're right here any RTV that's overhanging that inside lip like this one right here I'll pull that in and use that for that back side because it doesn't do any good hanging off inside of the pan the only thing it's going to have a chance to do is falling down in the pan and blocking up your uh, pickup tube. Use a couple of bolts for a ligament here. Get that bolt started and line up this other bolt. And you can just drop it right on. Absolutely necessary to go all the way around and get all your bolts started before you start turning, cranking them down. I'm just bringing these bolts up till they touch honestly for an oil pan that's about all you need is just snug it's supposed to be an asin asin as uh asian i don't know it's supposed to be a aisin most likely just a cheap aftermarket part that somebody on ebay is buying and putting asin stickers on and selling for twice as much here again metal gasket i copper spray that's just what I do. You guys don't have to do that. That's the beauty of America. All right, now it. Yeah, that's a that's a brand new thermostat. I promise. There goes the WRX. Still running like a champ. I put just a light, light, almost basically nothing smear of RTV on there. Yeah, I wire wheeled this hose nipple. Just get that nice and clean. Does it even fit on the opposite side if you try it? No, okay. Now we're good. Organized pile of mass chaos in the back there tells me that 
This whole exhaust manifold is next, I guess. Oh, you hear again, one side has a raised lip, and the other side is flat. Uh, flat side towards the aluminum, aluminum, the raised lip towards the cast manifold. Everybody's got their different beliefs and reasonings and stuff, and well, everybody's allowed to have their stuff. Everybody, you know, different reasons. They got their different ideas of why stuff should do what they do, and I respect that. Just know that you're wrong, I'm right, and yeah, we'll be, yeah, it's fine. This should just go on right on, I believe. Maybe. Sign, just sign. And over the top of, just going your home. Oh yeah, I gotta get an O2 sensor. Somebody sheared that one right off. So this car was running without an O2 sensor for I don't know, whoever knows how long. Torque. Pretty sure the book calls for three Ugga Duggas on those, right? Let me know if I'm wrong. These heat shields were just soaked in oil, so that'll, that'll stink for a while. So they rounded that right off. My Mac guy is just shaking his head right now. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Oh yeah. Here again, you wanna heat the part to expand the part, not the, not the fastener you're trying to get out. And try not to burn your towel. Oh, is that going? Something's doing something. It don't feel good. Man, it feels like it's just gonna snap right off. Shoot some peanut butter in there. Oh, it might be turning. Oh yeah, it's turning. Or it's just getting ready to shear right off. No, I think it's turning. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and then see if we can break this socket off before we get it completely loosened up. Oh yeah, left most of the threads and everything in there. When you're blowing something out like this, like in a hole, don't come from out here and then just start blowing it because you're going to blow everything in there. Get the nozzle in there, past everything you want to blow, and then pull the trigger so it blows it out. New O-ring. New O-rings here as well. Where's this go? Way over here, what? Right down. No, uh -huh. we'll easel them in here. Wow, there we go. I know that dipstick is the douchebag. I think that goes right here. That's where it's just supposed to go. Right there. All right, cleaned off and put on a new, like that topper tape kind of seal, I guess they have here. What is this called? Like that? Click, like all new squishy seals, wherever they were originally. Easy peasy. All right, do it all the bolt. Next one we got is water crossover pipe. These are known for getting corrosion uh, in these ports on these ceiling surfaces and this one is no exception it's erosion on the surface i took the bondo block went over it quick uh, with what was it 180 on this one no 200 220 there's new o-rings and yep oh yeah there we go i know i know i i hear you yep just just calm down My nose up. Why is it? Oh my gosh. Just. It's fine. Looking, and I think the next thing we can do is this thing. Whatever. 
It is. Uh, it's off this side. I know this goes up along the valve cover here. Like that. That feels, oh yeah. This is the PVC, PVC positive crankcase, PCV that I was talking about. This hose hard as a rock. You cannot get any flex out of that whatsoever. Uh, it sucks but I think I'm gonna have to get one of these as well. If you look really closely on it, it says intake left hand. Uh, driver's side would be left hand. Brand new Subaru bolts. I got all four, and all four of them have the hole in the middle for oil. And then I got a tool that now looking at this, I think is only gonna work for the intake cam. Where is it? It's right here. I got this big long bar with these three tangs on it, and those engage this. Why? Oh, it's only one spot. Oh, yeah, right there. So that's, you're supposed to be able to hold the gear as you crank down on the bolt. That's not gonna engage this. Wow. Why they do that? I thought it was supposed to do both cams. 22 foot pounds. Right, yeah. Since we don't have the right tool for the other side, we're gonna have to use a timing belt. There's 22. It's 45 degrees. 45 degrees. Some guys on the internet are saying we're getting about 55 foot pounds out of the torque wrench when they're at 45 degrees. 45 is gonna be like right here ish somewhere as long as all this doesn't move too much it's gonna hold it on yeah it's just about there i see a little bit more than 55 but i wonder what that is where is this um we're gonna say 60 see if that Clicks over when we reach 45. Engaged well. Yeah. It's even past that yet. Is that 45 even? That's not even 45. Wow. 60. 65. Oh man. That's about 45. Straight line with the cam gears. Yeah, that would be 45. That's, that's the accurate measurement. I don't care what you say. I would say it's more like 65, although that makes a difference if you put a lubrication underneath the bolt head or not. the little seal in the end already and the blue dot of approval no seal what this is the the seal here wait what ah Mmm. There we go. New Glarus. Pair 21. Yeah. That's delicious. You just bottom this one out in here? Kind of looks like you can. I'm going to go find a socket that fits that. Actually got a seal driver now. You know, one that's exactly the same size as the seal. Well, it actually doesn't fit down there either. 
But then I got one a little bit bigger, I figured, because we'll bottom out on top here, stop there, see what it looks like, and then maybe switch to that one. Drive it further down if we, if we feel that's that. Small seals are easy to center up. Center the driver over it. All right, so that's nice and flat there. Is that where we want to stop? <clears throat> or do we want to put this one on and get a little bit more out of it? Yeah, it looks like it wouldn't be too much more, just a little bit. What is all this stuff that we are? Ooh, here. Just a tiny bit more wacky whack. Here we are again. Boy, I like that. Don't forget the O-ring. It's right in there. Oil pump has dowel pins, so it should be self aligning here. I gotta go find that crank sensor. I think this. Oil pressure sensor might be shot, but we'll give it a give it a chance. See what it can do. Got the knock sensor here, but I don't know. I can't be where it goes, right? No, that bolt doesn't fit there. Oh, does it go down in here? Yeah, that's where it goes. Oh yeah. All right. These are supposed to be like all OEM burns. Find out here, I guess. Black one, coil bearing. Another black one, coil bearing. Yeah, it's supposed to be an orange one. And it's key bearing. Oh, this is the geared one. That one goes right down here by the water pump. So this must be that little guy that goes somewhere. That's the long bolt. And then initially stock, or from the <coughs> factory, one of these has an orange seal and one of them has a black seal. Now they're the same exact part number. Okay, so I guess that don't matter where they go, right? They're the same part number. So I wonder why it's factory one has an orange seal and then one has a black seal. They're both technically the same. Click, click. Click, click. Yep, click, click. And we got this sprocket guard. Which you're supposed to set at some height. I think I gotta wait till tiny belt is in there to do that. So I'm gonna leave that loose. That should catch my eye, hopefully. And I'm putting that belt on it. That's loose. Hopefully, I'm just gonna I'm gonna fire this one because I mean I just that's where it's gotta go. I got the buckets, shim buckets for the da, shim buckets for da. I got the shim buckets for the the valve flash for the cam. So that, that'll get a lot of that motor together. And then these Subaru, this is the breather pipes for the valve covers. And well, a new EG, no, uh, crankcase vent, crankcase vent, PVC, positive crankcase vent, uh, PCV valve because those, that holds, that's like a rock. Comments are coming in and everybody says, just get on with it. We want like five minute video, just pop, 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 run. Maybe, I don't know, maybe, is that what you guys want? Well, there, there's some stuff. Wow, why is everything dirty all the time? So we got a 474.
Ah. Merry Christmas, everybody. It's probably going to be after Christmas that you guys see this, but Merry Christmas anyhow. These main caps for the cams get torqued to 14 and a half. I put it at 15 actually. So 14 and then these are seven and a half. So I just go by feel like half of what those ones you just did. Cams turn, yep, nice and free. Valve cover all cleaned up, all new uh, OEM Subaru seals. For the initial hand crank down, I actually like to pull on this valve cover. I don't know if you can see that, that movement. I'm gonna pull on it a little bit this way. Just to get, hopefully all these bolts and their holes more centered and lined up right. And to get a little bit more pressure down into that corner of that seal. Coils, you see rust starting this is Wisconsin. I like to coat them with, this may seem weird. I know I do a lot of weird things. This is just that red, red and tacky. These coils are sealed. They're basically waterproof. What we're doing is just keeping that rust at bay. This is a good visual of what happens to a coil in Wisconsin. In between all of the well, the coating that's on here just gives it up and the rust just starts and just starts delaminating all these uh, what do they call these this stack up that goes through the coil it just starts basically rust jacking these um the reason the coil fails i don't know if it's because it rust jacks where it goes through into the like electronic part of this uh coil here and it just allows water to get in there and then that causes the problem or if it's all the rust itself and these laminations that just cause this not to let the current or whatever electron little particle thingies flow uh uh i don't know but rust is bad It doesn't break those clamps, it just snaps them open. Still reusable, I use those all the time. I'm just kind of sad for the price. It doesn't come with new clamps. Oh yeah. Oh, no need to even squeeze her anymore. She's on there good. So that's gonna go up you know, like that and that. That there, that there. I don't remember, I'd have to look back at the footage, but I don't think there was bolts in this bracket for this turbo to hold this flange up. There's supposed to be one down here going in by the bell housing and then this one right here. And I think this was the only one that was there, especially you can see it's cleaner on that head where it was. But it was broke off, that ear was broke off. So I think that turbo was just like hanging out on here, bouncing around. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to fix this. And that little piece was there and I kept it just like that. And I cleaned that up and weld that up. Mm -hmm. Weld her out. So, let's 
So it goes right there. That'll do. That'll do. I'm gonna find a couple of bolts for here and one in there. I gotta get these. These missing are why that broke. There's no 14. This would maybe work. It's got a washer instead of a flange, but these two short. Maybe not, especially for this one. It goes like into the side of the bell housing. Oh yeah, it's tight. Guess what I forgot to do. Better to, to remember now than after it's in the car. That's better. I know, right? Just out of control. With that grease. Which one? This one. This thing, this is the thing that has all the, all the things. Lucy goosey it was. Forget your head if it wasn't screwed onto your body. And so where does that go like that? Those are part matched really well. I'm surprised. Well, I mean, they are OEM, so. These are composite gaskets, and yes, I still shot some of your shot some copper around the ports just because I just I like it. Okay, so sure you drop this on. No wires get stuck underneath anywhere. No hoses. It's a lot to it's a lot to pay attention to all at one time here. I got that one hose back there and push that like that. Wow. Is there going to be stuff in the way? That side will go down. This side is fighting this breather stuff. Wow. Oh, I think it goes off. Uh, oh, yeah. So I get this clamp on her and then I just squeeze till she snaps on. Just like that. If it's not tight enough, which usually these are good if I don't crank on them, uh, I'll squish this with the same same deal. I'll squeeze, give that a squish to tighten it up, but typically they're tight enough. That one is. All right, I am gonna be all kinds of in your way trying to get this turbo on because I got a lot of things to look at here honestly i shouldn't even have had this on here but hopefully that's out of the way um there's one thing that i gotta do is fit the snout of the turbo into this intake tube right away so that goes in but then also super important is the oil drain back here is right there and that has to go in turbo i totally rebuilt spins nice nice and clean all over i've been through everything there's all everything this has to get plugged in yet all right so just slick her slip her in there wow this is gonna be a good time so you gotta get it in the intake tube and then try to get that and try to get the no oil return down in the I'm in a tube. Well, just go in your home. Are you too good for your home? Okay. Oh. Mm. Exhaust turbo bolts. As long as I can remember, it's always been get them as tight as you can just before it breaks. There we go. All right, continuing on, just trying to get on whatever I can get on. 
while waiting for that rear timing belt cover and wall clutch. But AC is one of those things I can bolt on and still get two timing stuff underneath here. So, there. Yeah. That'll be fine. Oh gosh, I wish that cover was here. <sighs> Always waiting for something. Just want to get it in the car. Start it up. Listen to it knock. Oh, intercooler. Here's a job you can pawn off on kids or a wife or girlfriend or whoever's sitting around complaining they're bored. Grab them a pair of tweezers and say, hey, you just go through and straighten up these these fins. You show them that you just grab it and give it a little squeeze and pull them straight. And you can make get back your full airflow again and look a little bit better. All right, I think that's pretty good for this back side. Took me a little while, but I think we're pretty much there. Like I said, this back side, not aesthetics at all. Just trying to get it to flow here, let the air through. So yeah, now you can see like this was that area that's completely flattened right out. And I got all those good enough where they're gonna flow here. I got a better idea. I'm gonna go see if I can get somebody else to do it. See if there's a kid here or someone. Say, hey, look at this, look at this fun job. Isn't this cool? We call it Zen. Working on a Chevy. Yeah, 2.4, you know what's going on there. Oh, while I'm waiting for the clutch to come in for stupid row. While I'm waiting for that clutch to come in and working on the Chevy, waiting for that to drain its fluids. Um, put a wrench on the crank and I got the motor flipped over, obviously here, upside down. And I am back feeding and filling the oil pump. So I'm just priming the pump because you have to prime a new oil pump. Well, any pump, you gotta prime the oil pump before you start the motor. So I'm just back filling with heavy actually weight oil, gear oil, back filling this port that goes to the oil pump. And then I'm just turning that wrench on a crank, uh, actually turning the motor backwards. Forwards would obviously pump oil to the filter, turning the motor backwards before the timing belt and everything is on. This uh, cams are all turned, so the valves are all closed. And honestly, this would be best to do when you have the spark plugs out, but I forgot, so this is gonna be a little bit harder for me to do. You don't have to turn it a lot. Uh, a few times turning it over is enough to get enough oil in that oil pump and get it primed up. So here you can see it going down, getting sucked in. All you're trying to do is get the oil pump itself filled up with that oil. It doesn't take a lot. Like I said, like just a few revolutions at the motor is plenty to get that pump primed filled with oil and all right oil pump is primed <laughs> exciting times some parts came in uh actually parts i was not expecting today came in something like that but what do we got we got brand spanking new oil cooler so that that wasn't supposed to be here but there it is Oh yeah, there it is. There. Why is it stuck in there? Oh, I don't know. Brand new from Scubaru is this. Oh yeah, this one that's broke. Like, can you see? Like this, right? Yeah. It's supposed to be like this right here with a bolt hole and stuff. Sweet! 
little tiny itty bitty rubber washery thingies. They go in right here. Uh, yeah, just like that. See that? Oh yeah, we got a we got a few of them to do. Just like just like that. Oh that's beautiful, Clark. 45 degrees. So we're gonna be pointing almost straight up here when we're done. More. That looks sad. That, yep. So I think the dotted line gets lined up on the crank. It is important and do not pass this up. You must complete the bleeding procedure before installation. It is very important. Importante! For the bleeding procedure, if you guys care, um, set this tensioner in a vise with the piston facing up. And once you do this bleeding procedure, never turn this past three or nine degrees, or 90 degrees, three or nine o'clock, 90 degrees. Try to keep it perfectly upright. Get it over from bleeding procedure over on the motor and installed and keep the motor upright from then on out. Pushing that piston down, you're gonna pull this pin, put that on the side, and you're gonna let this piston up all the way. Let her up all the way, and then slowly squeeze it back down. This takes some time because it's just bleeding fluid past that piston really slowly. When you squeeze all the way down to the bottom, you release it again. Let that piston come all the way up. And you do this three times. Squish, squish, squish three times. Squish her back down till you get this pin in. Sometimes it takes a little finagle in to get that pin in. Make sure it passes through this back side. All right, there, that pin has passed through that back side. Now you can release your clamp. And then keep this upright. Do not tip it on its side whatsoever. Keeping it upright. Straight in, it's home. Make sure all your lines are lined up with your lines. There's crank and both cams to look at. All right, you got dotted line, lines up with this line on the crank. Pulley, this line on the crank pulley lines up with this mark that is on the front of the oil pump. And then we'll come over here, if I can. The first cam, top single line on the cam gear, this is the intake cam, lines up with that line, and that lines up with that notch in the back of the cover. Down here, right below the exhaust cam, off on the side here, line on the cam gear, lines up the line on the belt, and that lines up with that little notch right there in the timing belt cover all the way over then on this other side this will be the driver side same thing line in the cam gear lines up with the line on the belt which lines up with this notch on the back here and same thing up here on the top with the intake cam line in the gear line on the belt line in the or the notch in the timing belt cover right there um, also then in between the two cam gears, there's these double lines that they don't always perfectly line up, but they're, they should be close. I mean, they should be obvious if they're a tooth off. It almost looks like this is a tooth off, but, uh, this gear right here, I didn't pull, I didn't pull this pin on the tensioner yet. So there's some slop in this belt. Once you pull the pin on the tensioner and rotate it once around, these should line up. So. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to torque down this bolt and we're going to pull this pin on this grenade and see what happens. <sighs> okay, well, once everything, yeah, once you got that bolted up that's tight and you got your once over, you check everything out. Pulley bolts are all tight and everything's tight, everything's lined up where it's supposed to be. And then we go through and I mean, it's funny that they shape it like this, but. Basically, you pull the pin on the grenade because it's only a matter of time before she blows up again. 
it is a Subaru after all, clockwise, because the tensioner's on the right side of the pulley, so you want the slop to go towards the tensioner all the time. You go back the other way and it starts pulling on that tensioner, you can skip a tooth somewhere. Start out kind of slow, so, so you can see that tensioner takes up some tension. And this is it. Everything is, everything is turning. Oh yeah, turning. Oh, and I'm gonna go around two or three times here. Well, you can still line up these marks. The belt is gone, but you can still line up the marks on the pulleys and go around and just check that all the marks on the cam pulleys line up with the notches and mark on the crank lines up the notch and oil pump. So we're good. fits right on or like it came from there. A little bit of rust in that AC groove. That hasn't had a belt in a while. But we'll take care of that later. Nice. Crank pulley bolts get precise. Precisely that much torque. This is the exciting time. All right, on some motors, these holes actually for the flywheel actually go through and into the crankcase area so oil can pass through them. So you have to seal them. These are blind holes, they do not do that, but I am still going to put a Loctite on them just because I don't want them coming out. Um, it's pretty typical for these to be just put in dry. And then I know, yes, I don't have the pilot bearing yet. That's coming with the clutch, hopefully. Should be here in an hour. So let me get this up here. Some flywheels have one or more holes drilled, clocked in a different position than the rest of them, so it can only go on one way. This does not look like it's the case. It looks like it's symmetrical. I guess you would call it. Some flywheels have a dowel pin, so they're only installed in one direction. It's flywheel resurfacing came out great, by the way. And they said, well within spec yet. So we're good. Just a couple ugga duggas. Flywheel's on. Oh, we need a pilot bearing. And then we can throw it in. Oh, 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 where's that UPS brown ass man? Well, no brown man yet, so I guess all we got to do is sit and wait. I'm going to throw that new oil cooler on. Uh, if you guys haven't seen this before, uh, we're, well, let's just let her go. So 
So if you can't figure it out, what we're doing here is pressurizing oil up through, well, unfiltered, mind you, I made sure everything was clean, up through where the oil filter would be. So it's going through the entire motor, all the journals going to the crank mains, going to the cams, going everywhere. While it's doing this, I'm able to walk around. Even the turbo is getting fed oil right now. I can walk around and check for oil leaks all over. See if anything's leaking anywhere. The ACVS solenoid thingies and whatnot. Check all those banjo fittings because we got 60 PSI on everything. If there's a leak, it'll show up now. And also like you saw, I can turn it over, distribute that oil that's getting pumped all over. And then the oil, after it runs through, it just goes in the oil pan where it belongs. Brown Santa should be here any minute. All right, guys, clutch kit is in. We gotta get this thing installed and on the car, in the car. No more frogging around. New pilot burn. There you go. There you go. All right, before you go installing a new clutch, make sure you you treat this just like uh, brakes, brake rotor and brakes. You wanna give her a shot of the brake cleaner and get the surface nice and clean. Clutch. Dar. Dar. Same thing with the brake cleaner and the pressure plate because that's got oil on it. Oh, carefuling. She's getting excited. Oh. So when I pulled that old clutch out, there is like, <clears throat> just an array of different kinds of bolts, styles, lengths. I mean, most of them are kind of this one length. That one's a little bit shorter than the other ones. This one's a little bit shorter. Like I just, why you hood, how? They should have lock washers on them. And there's only one here with a lock washer on it. Did they lose every single bolt and just replace them with whatever they had around? I'm gonna have to look around and look for a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight bolts. There's nine bolts in there? Hmm. I'll be back. All right, I got a somewhat matching set of bolts here. Some are still a tiny bit longer than the other ones, but I checked, they don't bottom out. So this goes on right, right now. I'll put in, gotta make sure that Lyman tool is perfectly centered. Slips in there nice and easily. Little 3 8 ugger dugger. So this is still loose, yeah. Nice and loose. Perfecto AO. Need a little bit of grease, doll. You don't want to get carried away with the grease in here, but you need a little bit on the stub. Because this is where the this is where the throw-up bearing rides on. And then just a hair, just just to get it moist on the input shaft here. Here especially, you don't want, you don't want a ton because this will actually spin and fling it out and get it on the pressure or on the clutch surfaces. Wipe the highs off here a little bit because we don't need a lot, just a little bit on those threads just to keep them from rusting and getting funny. Grease inside of the clutch fork here. There's a leaf in my wood grease. Wow. Throw a bearing. This, it's a stupid pull type. I do not like pull type clutches whatsoever. But this side with this little lip that actually latches in to the pressure plate so that faces out. The other spot for a little bit of grease is on these paws or feet, legs, stubs. What are these called? In there, 
And that's going to come out that hole on the top. Ooh. Just like that. Make sure this has got a good coating of grease too. And there's a slot in here. That slot lines up with a pin on this side. Uh, yeah. That goes in there. Goes true to R. Just like that. And then this plug goes in the end of that and that just holds that in there. Tranny's jacked up, car's on the lift. Uh, just lifted a little bit just in preparation for me to get underneath there later on. Uh, we're gonna dump this motor in here, I guess. Maybe. Am I, what am I forgetting? Well, that just seems too easy. Just go in your home. Why are you not wanting to go in your home? Okay, uh, you guys don't want to see me go through and hook everything up and putz around and frog around, so we're just going to skip ahead till when this is all together and when I'm putting fluids in and ready to... Bang! So, yeah, for me, it's going to be like probably two hours to get everything on here. But for you guys, it's going to be just a snap of the fingers. Watch. There it is. It's all done. Uh, that was easy. Uh, yeah, only, well, a few hours because they didn't have a single bolt in the right place. Um, hose clamps. Eh. Everything was wrong. They just, stuff is over torqued, things are in the wrong places. Couplers, this coupler that was on there, I changed it. This is a silicone coupler. There was a blue pile of crap on there. and It wasn't even sealing on one edge. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was, I had to use a lot of nuts and bolts. I had to go through my stash and, cause I just, I don't even know where they got half of the bolts that they used in stuff. But we got it all done, and it's in, and everything should be right-ish, maybe, I don't know, we're going to see. Uh, I hooked up the battery, I didn't turn anything on yet, I got to put antifreeze in yet. Watch for leaks, hopefully nothing leaks. I, I don't like leaks, especially the antifreeze. I am not a fan of the antifreeze at all. You get it on you and it's all sticky. I got this, whatever this is, it's 50-50. Yep some point maybe not now anymore that's well, green you guys watch for leaks down underneath the car well, why is it pouring out the back of the jug here I don't care how many I do it's always exciting the first start I'm sure it's gonna start uh, I'm almost positive of that what it sounds like and how long it runs for that's I got more of this. It's in the same jug, so it's same stuff. I promise. I just got this thing a few weeks ago, and I've already used it a few times. Pretty slick little deal. We stick that. They got a few different caps for different sizes. And then you got this funnel with an on-off valve in it, and the screen and whatnot. It seals to this, so you can let antifreeze in and out, and let it sit there and get the bubbles out as it runs. So see, you can fill this up, put fluid in here, and as it runs, it works the air bubbles out. They can come out, get out in this funnel. When it's done, you shut it off, pull it out, put the cap on, and you're good. Put your bets down in the comments. Is it going to start? Is it going to run? Is it going to knock? Is it going to blow up? Is fluid just going to shoot out everywhere? What do you What do you guys think? Or do you think I hit it all on the first try? Everything, no problems, no leaks, no knocks, no pings, dings, sprays, leaks. I would kind of like to have the stock air box. If any of you guys have one. And down here, I want to show you guys this. There's a bracket missing here. 
Uh, there's a bracket right underneath the intercooler right here. There's two bolts in it, but there's nothing out here to bolt the end of the intercooler on. And, well, there's like no shield. I'm assuming there's a shield. Maybe that's all one unit that goes over the turbo back here. I'm missing that whole spiel. If one of you guys have one, let me know in the uh, comments down below because I, I, I like that stuff. That'd be nice. And, yeah, stock airbox maybe. Get rid of this turbo blaster 8000 here. Look around, hooked up the battery, got antifreeze in. No AC belt yet. Nah, it's winter. We'll worry about that later. Everything else is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. I'm gonna go up with the car so the tires are off the ground. Just so if it does start and we're running it and whatnot, I can maybe roll through a couple of years. It's hard to explain the feeling, but excitement every time. It might run funny. Well, a couple of reasons it might run funny is it has to do with the idle. It has to do with the idle learn deal. Uh, it's something about Subarus when you reset the ECU, you start them, it's got to go through an idle learning process. Uh, and there's no O2 sensor up in. <laughs> well, there's an O2 sensor, but it's not plugged in because there's no wires there. So that's going to be running in base map, whatever's in the ECU. Or there's that cob thing too. I don't know if that, I'm going to get rid of that. Anybody's looking for a, a cob unit, I'm going to be unmarrying it. It's going to get a divorce and, and kicked out. So if you're looking for one, let me know. Rolling the key forward. I heard a fuel pump prime. What do you say? Fire in the hole! Oh, uh, it's, it's just me here. Oh, I put the wrong oil in. That's fine. A little bit nervous. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, here we go. Ready? and fresh gaskets and my grease I smeared all over every single thing I put on the car. Nothing is pouring out yet. You know what would be nice? A throttle cable to pull on. There's, there's nothing there. It's tried by wire. There's just wires. Oh, the check engine light is on. That means the cruise control is going to work. on the brakes. Second gear. Third gear. Fourth gear. Hitting the brakes a little bit. Try to get some of that rust off the brakes. Fifth gear. Sixth gear.
PBS works. Oh yeah, I gotta lift up on that. Can I have to go in reverse? Reverse works. Not much. Huh. Do you guys always go to Max Fissies on your tires or do you go by what the door tag says? Curious. All right, here we go. Here we go for a ride, low bumper. It should be, yeah, that'll be fine. So yeah, we got, we got lights, but no oil pressure light and no overheating. So that's, that's the main thing. Here we go. I've got my lovely assistant videoing for me now. <laughs> The lights are all on because of stuff. Just don't worry about that. No. <laughs> Tires are a little flat spotted. That's what the, the bouncing is. No, it's warm. It tracks nice and straight. Did it come with a bumper? Yeah. Go ahead, Johnny. <laughs> Don't hit the guy in a bike with the blaze vest and blinky light. And do you have to lift up on that when you go in reverse? Yeah. It's just like my Evo. Aww, but way better. Oh, audience, I had an Evo one time. Yeah, but even these are way better than Evo. I liked my Evo better. <laughs> I get to stop holding this. Why does the rear diff temp on? Because that wire's broke. I saw it earlier and I forgot about it. Right where the wire goes into the rear diff, the sensor, it, it's broke off for whatever you reason. Right? It's beeping like that because he won't wear his seatbelt. Shh, that's illegal. Well. There is a chance that this motor might blow up on our way, so. Why? I should have told you that earlier. Why would you say that? Because these things happen sometimes. It's Look, the steering wheel is like a, a D shape. It's weird. It stands for Dildo. All right, I just pulled her back in the shop here, guys. Initial drive was. I, I can't. I there. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm impressed. Uh, everything went as smooth as I could ask for it to go. Even better, I guess you could say. Um, I got into boost a couple of times. Not floored, not a lot, but just a little bit. Just to make sure I was going to do that. And yeah, absolutely no problem. And honestly, this weird little blow-off valve sounds kind of neat. Um, it's a recirculating blow-off valve, but you can hear it yet, though. Uh, it's just... It's kind of, I was, it's, yeah, that's cool. Um, check engine light and all kinds of stuff because no two sensor and uh, I left the gas cap off. So I'm sure it's got a code for that maybe. I don't know if it's got that yet, but it's in there. I think we can call this one a success. This is one of those dipsticks where on this side it's 
down by the low mark and you flip it over and it's like three quarters. I've dipped this like four times now and I still get the same thing. Get a reflection in there hopefully you guys can see like where it is on that side. And then you flip it over. Try to get a reflection and look at it, it's three quarters. I mean, either way, it's a little bit low, but. What, what side do you go by? I've, like I said, I, and that's the fifth time I dipped that, and that's the same reading I get every time. What do you, what do you guys, what, do you go by the highest side or the low side? There was no, no knocking, no pinging, no rattling. I, it, it honestly, it drove like, like I just used it yesterday and there was nothing wrong. It was, it's amazing. I'll get that front bumper on. I'm waiting for this clip. Like I said, once that comes in, I'll get the front bumper on and then I'll be able to drive it. Oh, winter washer reservoir down there is cracked. It doesn't hold anything. Uh, please subscribe and hit that like button down there in a, somewhere. It doesn't cost you anything. It's free. And thank you guys for watching and yeah, come back, come back for the next one and have a good night, evening or morning, whenever you're watching this.